Welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Tankoviak, and we are in our eight part preparedness video series. We are on part three, trying to get this out to you as fast as I can and, and as quick as I can out there for you to help make life a lot easier for you. Teach you a little bit about self sustainability, self reliability, so that you can actually stay ahead of this and not be panicking, bogged down. This is stuff to make life a lot easier. Part one was on food, part two was on water, part three is on power, and this is all going to be an eight-part series. So uh, stick around, watch the other ones, stay tuned for more to come here as quick as I can get them out for you. When it comes to power, power is a big one. Now there's a bunch of different options, we're going to cover some. Now the most expensive option is going with what they call a whole house generator. A lot of people have these, especially here in the rural areas where I live at, a lot of my neighbors have whole house generators. They're going to be an 8,000 watt to a 10,000 watt or 8 to 10 kilowatt, which is 1,000 watts. So 8 to 10 kilowatt or 8,000 to 10,000 watt whole house generator um, that is usually connected to your natural gas or runs off of your propane so you don't have to worry about it and when your power goes out there's an automated switch in your house that switches everything over to that generator whole house switch over lever and it does it all for you automatically so when your power goes out five seconds or seven seconds later that generator kicks in your power is right back on and it runs until the power comes back on then that turns off and you go back to normal power Beautiful system. They're anywhere in the price range of $5,000 to $8,000, depending on where you live and what you go with. So they're expensive. We do not have one. Neighbors around me do. They love it. It's a very nice, convenient system. Now, the next thing you can do, because that may not be an option for a lot of people, is a portable generator option. Portable generators are great too. Now you can get a 8 to 10 kilowatt or 8,000 to 10,000 watt portable generator. You can buy a whole house switch which uh, have an electrician put it in for you. It costs you probably 500 bucks but he can put that whole house transfer switch in there where you just take your generator out of your garage, pull it over by your house, plug that RV cable right into that switch and hit the and flip the lever and now you have the same thing as a whole house generator. But you can get one of these, an eight to ten thousand watt portable generator, for about five or six hundred bucks. Pay another five or six hundred bucks and have the electrician put it in there, and now you're good to go. The downside is here you need to supply the fuel for it. Now you can get uh, propane ones that run on that and have a line hooked up again if you want to get that crazy. But again, you're almost turning it into a whole house setup. But if you're going to run an eight or 10,000 watt portable generator, I highly recommend that you have probably, I'm going to say no less than eight to 10 five gallon gas cans set aside just for that generator. Because something that big and powerful is going to require a tremendous amount of fuel to run it. So it is an option. Now you can also go with smaller portable generators. Here, generators. Here we have two. For my bow fishing boat, I have a 4,000 watt generator that I run my lights for my bow fishing boat in, and then I also have a 4,000 watt inverter generator, uh, clean power inverter one. It's nice and quiet that we use. That's uh, uh, we run for our camper. So when we go out camping, we can run our whole camper off of that one too. Um, the inver inverter generators like the Hondas, the Yamahas, ours is a Predator, um, you know, you can get them. I will put some links down below for you uh, where you can buy them on Amazon and ship them right to your house or you can go pick one up in a store. Check prices, see what's best for you, but I will have links down there so you can see what I'm talking about. And if you choose to buy them from there, great. If not, like I said, I have no sweat there whatsoever. Get them wherever you want to get them at. Um, but the portable generators in that 4,000 range are going to use way less gas than something like that. The difference is they're not going to run your whole house. You're not going to run your air conditioner or anything like that off of that kind of a smaller generator. You're going to have to go to a bigger one. But a 4,000 watt generator will run your pump. It will run your uh, well if you're on a well. It will run your refrigerators, your freezers. It will run your TVs, your lights. It will run the things that you want. Um, maybe not all at one time, but it will do all of that stuff for you and give you that functional aspect. And you can get like uh, my rock solid, strong, tough as nails, never let me down, uh, champion 4,000 watt generator. I think I paid 300 bucks for it. Um, and that thing, I beat it. I mean, it gets used for eight hours a, eight hours a day, you know, 60 times a year for three straight years and still running strong on my bow fishing boat. Um, in the rain, in everything, it, you know, things that you're not supposed to do with it, you know, using them in the rain, I, I do with it and it holds up incredible. So um, they're not, not a bad option to have. 
You can run them off extension cords, something like that. For the love of God, do not make a suicide cord. Do not try to backflow your house by plugging a generator into one of your outlets, hoping to backflow it because you will kill somebody on the power lines. Um, don't do anything like that. Run extension cords off your generator, bring them into your house, and then use those extension cords to power whatever it is that you need to power. Don't try to backflow your house. Uh, you hear people doing that. They don't make cords to do that for a reason. You have to make your own, and it's not its not legal, I don't even think, and it's not safe, and it's not good, and don't do it. So um, be careful what you find on the internet about that kind of stuff. But a portable generator, fantastic option. Again, even here, I would have no less. If you're running a generator and it is not connected to your propane or natural gas, eight can minimum, I would say eight five-gallon cans is what I would consider having. With your gas, um, even for your vehicles, if you're going to store eight cans of gasoline or ten or six or whatever you're going to do or even just four, number them. Take your gas cans and put a piece of duct tape on them and on there write one and then the next one, write two, write three, write four, five, six, seven, eight on your gas cans. When you have them full, put them in your garage or shed in order. Okay, so they're sitting there. When you every single month take a gas can from the right on the first or third or 15th or whatever day, but every month take a gas can, put it into your lawnmowers, your four wheelers, your car, whatever it is that you have to do. With your cars, you have a special funnel that you're going to need to be able to put that in there. It's in your jack area of your car. You can't just put a gas can in like you used to with a lot of the newer cars. You'll have the, the funnel to do it will be in your car by where the jack or spare tire is. You, if you don't want to keep doing that monthly, go to your dealership and buy that funnel from them. Have them order it. It's a part. They'll find it. Cost you like two or four bucks. They give you that funnel. Now you have one that's just handy. You don't got to keep diving into your car to find it. But every month, take that one on, a, on the right-hand side, fill whatever you can with it, lawnmowers, car, whatever, take it up to the store, fill it with gas, and then put it on the left-hand side. Now, the reason we number them is because that way, even if they get knocked out of order or somebody comes in or you have to move stuff to clean behind there, you can take a picture of the order and the numbers show you where they are. And so when you put them back, you're putting them in that same order so everything is fresh. Gas does not last longer than a year. So you want to be monthly rotating, taking this one out and using it, refilling it, and putting it on this side. Next month, this one, and it goes over here and it's that rotation. So doing that with your gas cans is important to do. And having gas is important, even if it's just for your vehicles and you're not running a generator. Now, speaking of vehicles, one of the ones that very few people know about that is very dirt cheap is running an inverter from your vehicle. Um, so what happens, what an inverter is, is again, there'll be a link down below to a couple of them. We have an 800 watt Cobra and a 1000 watt Cobra. And I think we actually have a 1200 watt. We were just going through there and I didn't even know I had it. But an inverter is just a box about this big and it's got plugs on there, regular house plugs, some USBs. And on this side are two cables, a red like jumper cables, a red and a black for positive and negative. What you're going to do with this inverter, and they're not expensive. Again, there'll be links down here where you can see what these are. Buy them there, buy them at Walmart, buy them at Best Buy. You do whatever you want. But that inverter, when the power goes out, you can take your car, pop the hood, set this thing there somewhere where it's safe and not going to fall in, connect the, right to your car battery, positive to positive, negative to negative, start your car up, and then you can plug your extension cords into this, and your vehicle will power that inverter and that now gives you 800 watts. It's almost like having an 800 watt or a 1000 watt generator that runs off of your car. Your car at idle barely sips any fuel and lasts for a very long time. And it will power your refrigerator if you need to. It will power your TV, light, you know, that kind of stuff. It will give you the power function you need, especially because you don't need to run the vehicle the whole time. You can run your car for an hour, make sure that battery's up and charged, turn it off for 45 minutes, half hour, go out there, make sure it starts. If it starts real good, depending on the size of your battery um, and what you're using for, then extend it out a little more. You might get an hour and a half or so where you can leave the vehicle off and have that inverter still running everything based on your car battery. And then you go back out there, start your car for an hour or so, let that thing recharge your battery, and you can keep going. Okay, these things are super easy to use. When we lose power here, I don't pull out the generators and do all that stuff and mess with it. We just pull our car right around by our slider. I pop the hood, I hook up the inverter to it, and then we have all of our, like our TV and our internet, and everything is all plugged into a power strip. 
I just plugged that power strip right into my extension cord to there and we got light, TV, internet, we got everything we need and we just go right on like everyday business. So that inverter for your vehicle, like I said, dirt cheap, they're like 30 bucks, 30, 30 to 100 bucks depending on what model you get. But they're not expensive and they are basically a generator that runs off of your vehicle so it's safe, reliable, not going to fail and you also have the beauty of your whole gas tank of your car so you always keep your cars topped off especially in a crisis like right now with corona going on keep your vehicles topped off you get down a quarter you if you go from full to three quarters to three quarters stop and put in the 10 bucks and refill it keep those tanks full all the time so that you can run that inverter whenever you need to it's it's mandatory um and then gas, like I said, I told you already about this one, how to store it, what to do with it, keep all your vehicles full of gas all the time, and when you're putting them in those cans, set that rotation, that way you're not wasting anything. Otherwise, people go and they get in a panic and they buy five gallon gas, five five gallon gas cans, fill them full of gas, throw them in the garage, and they never touch them again. A year later, you're throwing that out. That's, you know, that's a lot of money. It's a hundred bucks or whatever it is in gas or something that you have to now throw out because you weren't smart. By doing the rotation of having that, again, where you got can one, can two, three, four, five, okay, well, as the months go by, it becomes something more like, uh, it's more like uh, three, four, five, uh, and then it goes to one, two, you know, because you're doing this rotation with it. And that's fine, but as long as you see these numbers, you kind of have a reference if you have to, like I said, move those cans or do something. And then two comes over and goes to here. So it's a really easy process just to number them and run them that way. So have the gas set and ready. With your fridges, your, your refrigerator, your freezers, we'll talk about cooler in a minute. But with your freezers and your refrigerators, when the second the power goes out, I don't care if it's sleeping bags, which work great if you have them. They're probably the best thing. But sleeping bags, if you got them, if not, spare quilts, spare blankets, winter jackets, anything that's insulated like that, take them and put them on top of your fridge. Put them on top of your freezers. Your freezers and refrigerators are basically a cooler, but they're not very well insulated. If you put that on top of there, it is going to make a tremendous difference in how long your food stays. It's mandatory. The second the power goes out, we will stock two sleeping bags and two jackets on top of there. Um, on each of our fridges and our freezers, we have two freezers, an upright, a, a sideways a deep freeze, and then we have our refrigerator, and every one of them gets covered up on the top to help retain that cool, to, to keep the cooled air from leaving through that thin wall of that, that unit. So that's an important one. Also, in your freezers, you should have the bottoms of, them, of the freezers lined. I don't care, it depends on how much free space you have, but buy cases of water, which I talked about in the water section, last section, get cases of water, Line the bottom of your freezers in as many as you can fit in there and let those bottles of water freeze. Okay, once and they're frozen pretty good because they leave enough room in there so that they can freeze. You don't have to drain any of them out of them. I, I've been doing this for many years and I've never had one blow apart. Um, so they, they got enough room in them for expansion anyway. Take those bottles, line your freezer with them, and then that way, if the power does go out, those bottles. As they start, to, they're frozen, they will continue to radiate that cold air even as they thaw and they will keep your food for much longer. So if you have a freezer and you just, the power goes out and you're like, oh man, what a bummer. Three days into a power outage, depending on the ambient temperature, your food might be gone. Under those same scenarios, or that same kind of characteristics, if you had it lined with the whole bottom of that line with 10 or 15 or 20 bottles of frozen water, and you had those blankets and, and uh, insulating factors on top of it, instead of being gone in three days, it'll last seven or eight days. So huge difference in there. Plus, you can take those frozen water bottles, especially if you have them enough in there, and, and it's good because your freezers fight harder to keep things cold when there's less space in it or when it's less full. So the more full you make the freezer, the less you have to work, the less money it costs, your free, it costs you to run your freezer. So when you have your freezer full, anywhere that's not filled up, fill it with those water bottles. Stick them into any place you can. Let them freeze. They become, it will save you money on electricity. It will save the longevity of your freezer. It's not working as hard. And you have them available for cold water, for other purposes, and then what you do with those is use them for your cooler. 
So even if you're going to the beach or to the boat for the weekend, instead of buying bags of ice, which are going to melt, get filled with water, and be a pain in the butt, and you, you spent five bucks on there and you can't get it back, take those frozen water bottles and put those in your cooler. They will not fill up with water. They will sweat a little, but you don't get the water in there. Um, they're going to do an incredible job of keeping everything in your cooler cold. And then when you get back, you can take them and put them back in your freezer, freeze them and reuse them again. So uh, it's, a, it's a great way to do it. And when you have a major storm or catastrophe or a hurricane or tornado or some coronavirus, anything coming that you have to deal with, and you want to buy extra food, perishable, lunch meats, milk, cottage cheeses, things like that that you want to keep in a refrigerator, but you don't have the refrigerator space, take that cooler that you have, put it in your garage, take some of the water bottles out of your freezer, not all of them, but take some of those water bottles, line the bottom of that cooler, refill that freezer where you took the water bottles from with new water bottles so they can start freezing, but line your cooler with water bottles, put milk, put all your perishables, put the stuff that you wanted extra of in that cooler in the garage, close it, and that stuff will stay for a week solid like that. It'll stay longer if you again put a insulating sleeping bag or something or, or winter jacket or something over top of it, it'll keep it cold. And now you have two refrigerators, one in the house, and you also have this running on your power, but now you have another one in cooler form in your garage is holding a bunch more food. Every set, five, seven days, go out there, take those water bottles that are starting to thaw out, pull them out of there, put them in your freezer, take more from your freezer, put them in there, and you can keep this cycle going indefinitely where all you have to do is literally once a week go out there and change the water bottles in it, and it's a whole nether refrigerator system. Okay, so it works great. Now, a couple bonus things for you to make things easier. Um, with the inverter thing, if you don't want to run your vehicle all the time, I, I have a bow fishing boat. My bow fishing boat has four huge deep cycle batteries on it, and uh, I use them to power my trolling motors and to power stuff like that on there. Well, with that setup, with those four big deep cycle batteries, they're charging all the time. I have them plugged in. If we lose power, we can take that inverter that we talked about. I can connect them to those batteries and power anything I want off of those batteries for a long time. I can also then use the vehicle to recharge those batteries. At the same time, I'm charging things like cell phone battery packs, stuff like that. So my vehicle can be a recharging supply source because the vehicle has an alternator. The alternator will power that stuff and charge those batteries up for me. So I can use that. So if you have a deep cycle battery, like I said, we got four um, big ones. But if you have one on your boat, you have one in your golf cart, if you just want to have one laying around, they're not expensive. You can get a decent one for 60 bucks, 70 bucks. You know, I think my bigger ones are 100 to 110 a piece, but they're not a lot. But that deep cycle battery, that's what all houses that run on solar are. Solar brings it in, stores the energy in deep cycle batteries, and inverter converts it to house capable AC energy and you are off and running. Um, and it's the same concept, but you can do the same thing by having one or two deep cycle batteries if you want to store them and be able to run all of your stuff off of that. I mean, uh, when I camp with Joe, when we are, we're in our wall tent, he brings two deep cycle batteries with us, and we have our own power station to power with that and inverter. We have pure, full power, quiet. We don't have to run a generator and listen to it run all night. Those two deep cycle batteries will do everything we need in camp right off of those batteries and an inverter. So it's another great option for you. Um, patio solar lights. People don't think about these, but these, uh, you can, I'll put a link to them, to some, some down below, but the cheapest ones you can find, or at Walmart or Ace Hardware, anywhere you want to find them, but the cheapest ones you can get that are small. The bigger they are, the quicker they burn out. So you don't, you know, you want simple, the $1, $2 a piece versions of them, but they got to have the solar sun panel on the top. And that's basically a rechargeable AA battery or a rechargeable, I like the rechargeable AA ones because then even when it powers out, I can recharge my batteries that I use for other things by the sun in those lights. So they're kind of dual purpose. Um, but you take that battery or those lights during the day, put them out where the sun will hit them. Okay, you're not going to use them outside. You're going to take them, put them outside where the sun is going to hit them and charge them all day long. When the power is at night, or you, when it, the power and charge all day, when the power is out at night, when you come in the house, you grab those, 
and you have eight of them. I buy them by eight packs. You can put them in each of the bathrooms and each of the different rooms and they will basically run for about six to eight hours and you have light small light but you have enough light that you don't have to use flashlights you can walk from your bedroom to the bathroom to the kitchen to whatever you need and you have these light sources are all around and then when you wake up in the morning take them set them outside let them recharge you're good for the next night and they're dirt cheap like i said they're about a buck or two a piece they're not expensive and they're very very easy to to, to do this with so it's a nice little tip for you to have light throughout your house without having kids getting scared or anything like that and then another good tip for you too are your cell phone battery packs. It does not have to be some super expensive dark energy or anchor version. Um, I use these things for all kinds of things. And honestly, I'm not going to lie, the $10 ones from Walmart work just as good and last just as long as any of the fancy expensive anchor or energy or any of these ones I got. Maybe those are more durable or more whatever, but realistically, they're all the same. It's a battery. It's literally a battery. You charge it and then you can use it to charge your phones. I use it to charge cameras. I use it to charge camera batteries. I use it to charge my phones. We use it to charge all kinds of things like that. So, um, but they don't have to be expensive ones. Again, maybe I'll throw a couple links in here for you. Maybe I won't because you guys know what this is. Uh, so I won't clutter it up. But um, those are nice to have because when you take these and you're going to use this vehicle and inverter setup, when that vehicle is running, and it's charging the battery that's going to run that inverter. Also have your battery packs plugged into the USBs in your car so that your battery packs are charging at the same time. That vehicle is a gold mine source of this. Or same when you're running your portable generator or you're running off your deep cycle batteries. It's good to charge these as well because then you can pull those off the charger once they're charged from your car. Bring them in the house and now you have portable power sources in the house. So when you're sleeping at night, your phone is charging, you have solar lights providing your light around there, and you have your fridge covered. It doesn't need to be powered all the time. With this setup, if you power your fridge and your freezer, for you let it run for one hour a day, it will keep everything cold, especially if you have the top of that covered and you have frozen water bottles in the freezer. An hour, an hour a day or an hour every, every five or six hours will take care of everything you need in there. Okay, it'll keep it cold enough and you'll be in good shape. So that vehicle becomes a heck of a power source to be able to do everything. And if you have these few things there, like I said, bonus is the deep cycles if you want them. Not necessary. But you have these other things in line, you're going to be foolproof and not have any concerns whatsoever. Um, now running air conditioners, that's a whole nother ball game. You may not be able to pull that off and be able to run that um, for air conditioners. But if you can't run an air conditioner and you need to cool down, running a very small, simple house fan that you have, um, you know, a regular, just a store-bought little fan, plug that in. You can run it off your generator or inverter or whatever you want to. Um, but having that and then taking some of your frozen water bottles and just putting them in a, in a bowl and having them right behind there as those start to give, they're radiating cold air. Okay, those water bottles are going to just spew cold air out from them. And if you have those sitting right in front of a fan, they will help cool things down quite a bit. And you can then refreeze them when you're running your vehicle and inverter and refreezing your freezer stuff. So there's a lot of options there for you. But running an air conditioner is a really hard one to do without having a whole house generator. And even if you do, you're going to tap through your, I mean, run, if you were to try and run a, a, 10,000 watt generator, whole house generator, and you were going to run on, say you got a 500 gallon pig um, of a tank of propane out there, you're probably going to make it about a week and a half and you're going to basically wipe that entire supply of propane out um, because that generator is going to work so hard to run an air conditioner. So understand that's a very tricky one to do. You're going to have to get creative if you're living in Florida or somewhere where it's really hot all the time uh, to be able to find ways to cool off. I recommend, you know, having water somewhere where you can cool off in or, uh, you know, something like that. I don't have that problem up here in northern Michigan. You'll have to find a solution for it. But um, there you go. That kind of covers your power options for you. And uh, we're going to get ready to get into the next one. So stay tuned. I'll get it published and I'll there as quick as I can for you. Hopefully this stuff is helping, making life a lot easier, getting you more towards the self-sufficiency and less relying on anybody else or government to help you survive. And you can live this way knowing that you're, you're in good shape. Regardless of the generators, if you don't want to use that, if you are sticking with this inverter option in vehicle right here, you cut out 
well, you want the gas anyway. Um, so basically from here, all of this stuff right here can all be done with a inverter that you can get for about 40 bucks. So, I mean, like I said, this is a nice bonus. I already have them. Would I have bought one just to run my house? No, but I have two generators for other things, so it's nice. This, I don't have. My neighbors do, but even that can be short-term. If this power goes out when they only got a, if they only got a, uh, say they got, uh, you know, a, uh, uh, half even a half a propane uh, their half a propane supply this will not last them very long they might get a week or two out of it but that's about all they're going to go and then they're done it's over for them um, so this one here in my opinion is a absolute must have uh, because it gives you all that flexibility keep the gas can full so that you can refill your car and have that covered and that will take care of your fridge your freezers you got the cooler options you got the light set up right here you got batteries for everything you need and life is good your power supplies are taken care of so thanks for watching next video coming as quick as I can get it to you on this subject